On April 18, 2008, Southern Illinois and the surrounding states were reminded they lived close to the New Madrid fault line. The 5.2 quake and the numerous aftershocks were minuscule in earthquake terms, but reminded everyone of the potential for another big one, like the series of eight plus magnitude quakes that occurred during the winter of 1811 to 1812. Madrid Fault gets a lot of minor quakes and has a lot of associated fault lines running in all directions. One fault line runs to the Gulf and connects with yet another fault line running up from the Gulf along the eastern seaboard to Charleston, South Carolina and Boston. All those old brick and masonry buildings. What makes the New Madrid so devastating is something called liquefaction. Quakes on rock are jolts, usually a single jolt. But incessant jiggling happens on mud like the Mississippi mud, and everything is turned into a type of quicksand with a long, long reach. Not much is left standing. Well, why does North America have a fault line right in the middle of the plane? It's due to a diagonal pole on the North American continent. As the Atlantic widens at the equator, Mexico is pulled to the west while the New England area is kind of nailed into place. So, what's causing this diagonal pull? The massive North American plate is locked at the top, squared off like a blockhead, so it can't roll when the Atlantic pulls apart at the equator. River valleys are always a weak spot where the plate is thin. Well, for North America, this is right along the Mississippi, right through the New Madrid. Nice theory, but is there any evidence of this? A diagonal pole between New England and Mexico would have disasters occurring along a line between these two points. Let's take a look at what's been showing up since Planet X arrived in the vicinity in 2003. Tears in the Earth, like this crevasse in Arizona. And there were bigger crevasses in the Earth like this in Mexico too, just suddenly appearing. And sinkholes, like this one that appeared in Milwaukee in June of 2004. And Pennsylvania, of all places. Sinkholes galore in Pennsylvania lately. Landslides and derailing trains on the East Coast. And breaking steam and water and gas line mains nationwide. And buckling roadways near Houston. All indicative of the ground being pulled apart pulled in different directions. This diagonal pole causes the land along the Mississippi to move in different directions, causing havoc to the bridges along the Mississippi. Like this bridge across the Mississippi in Minneapolis, which snapped sharply to the east when it gave on August 2, 2007. In the fall of 2005, there was a peely smell along this diagonal pole Rotten cabbage soup, old socks, rotten eggs. This was caused by rock layers being pulled apart, releasing rotting vegetation smell to the air. Another and more dramatic stretch stench occurred on August 8, 2007. This time the stench was recorded all the way from Italy and the UK, across the US and all the way to Australia. Dozens of people were taken to the hospital in New York City and Perth, Australia, sickened by the methane gas, and birds dropped dead in Austin, Texas. At first it was assumed the dead birds were due to bioterrorism. You've heard the adage, a canary in the coal mine. This is due to birds being more sensitive to methane gas and dropping dead. And this is why they were used in the past to detect methane gas in mines. So where is this leading? We're going to have big quakes around the New Madrid well before the West Coast does its adjustment. The North American continent is currently being bowed, with Mexico pulled west so a bow is formed all the way from Alaska to the tip of Mexico. At some point the New Madrid will give way in fits and starts at first. After major adjustments in the New Madrid fault lines, the West Coast will start to adjust, 
relieving the tension in the bowl. There is pressure along the west coast, of course. This will only result in the predictable volcanic increases and west coast earthquakes. But the primary drama preceding the pole shift will be the ripping action that a plate unable to move must endure. The notable area of catastrophe during this is the eastern half of the continental U.S. From Houston to Chicago to New England, the diagonal pole will tear the underpinnings of cities.